Goedenavond, baie welkom bij Four Anglers Live. Dit is natuurlijk weer dinsdag en ons is terug. Ons was so bykie weg geweest voor een tijdje en verleden week het ons technische probleem gehad. Nie aan ons kant nie, maar die mannen wat die uh, kracht beheer het, besluit ons gaan die kracht geheer nie. So, nie te min, nou kan hier ons lekker saam, ek het een baie speciale gast in die, um, in die atelier van hand en ek sê baie welkom aan Dien Pelser. Dankie Werner, ek is uh, baie blij met my uitgaan hoor. Um, ek gaan glad nie so klein Afrikaans vanavond nie, ne? Glad nie. <laughs> but if we have to, we can, I can speak English very deliciously, so... Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I think we've, we've got a mixed audience, um, Dean. So we've, we've got quite a mixed audience. We've got a, a lot of English um, viewers. So whatever is um, is comfortable. Maar ek weet, jy is eindelijk een boerkie daar onderweg gesteek. Jy sê dit net nie vir ons nie. Ek het jy al vertel. Jy weet, ek het een Afrikaanse vrou getrouwd. So my Afrikaans het ek geleer om myself te verdedig in die hevelik. Oké, okay, maar dan gaan ons nou nie met die, die woordeskat baie uitbreid. Ja, ja. So die, die woordeskat sal ons beheer. Uh, 100%. You can use that day. With Marieke. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oké, okay, ons kan jy lekker saam. Um, ek sê baie dankie aan uh, Gijs Pitser Motors van Zwoogborg. En natuurlijk Ryan Audio Visual wat het moeilijk maak met ons technologie in die atelier. So is dat jy kan kyk en luister en uh, ons vir jou een lekker program kan bring. Nou ja, wat doen ons alles vanaan? Ons gesels met Dien oor karp en karp en groot karp en nog karp en wat hulle eet en al die type goeikies wat jylle wil weet. Ek gaan uh, al delf diep into his, um, his experience banks and his brains with respect to carp fishing. En uh, Dan gaan ons een beetje kyk na wat het by Sefte het gebeur. Uh, I've gone through all the, the little stands of the manufacturers and wholesalers and so forth. Um, we've picked out a number of innovative products for you. We'll show you that in two episodes, one in the beginning of the program and one a little bit later. Um, en dan natuurlijk eerst oktober, wat uh, saterdag aand is wat kom. Skop, hier gaan ons al weer af, en is een van die redes, hoe kom ons uh, nie elke dinsdag by julle was nie, maar ons het julle saamgevat op een paar van die, hier gaan ons al weer toere wat ons uh, meegemaak het, so ons gaan vir julle een lekker advertentie wees oor wat daar begin, en dan natuurlijk uh, gee ons het lompie prijse weg. Wat ek ook wil sê, die oberengelaar, hier die specifieke uitgave, is uh, nie meer baie lang op die rakke nie. So as jy hem nog nie getraai het nie, die rest van hierdie week en die naweek, want maandag is die nieuwe uitgave daar, so maak seker, jy krij jou uitgave nou. Ons gaan natuurlijk ook uh, saam met al die prijsies wat ons weggeef, saam met elke prijs, en wat ons weggeef, gee ons ook een overengelaartje weg. En dan gaan ons een paar prijse weggeef. Nou, die supercast hamper, wat natuurlijk van die producten is, wat ons in die nieuwe hier gaan ons al vier reeks gebruik, het ons reeds die vraag gevra, jylle het reeds ingeskakel, jylle het reeds jylle antwoorde gegee, daar is een lekker kort lys, jylle wil vol name, en as vijf van hierdie wempers, al wat ons gaan doen vanavond, ons gaan het trek. Nou ja, dan gaan ons ook, um, Dien het vir ons een paar interessante goed saamgebring, so Dien, what are we giving away, there's two hampers, what does the hamper consist of, that you are giving away tonight? Yeah, so thanks, man. I think by now the viewers have probably got to know Christopher more around the True Feed and the True Feed pellets and, and brands. But uh, recently we, we gave, uh, through you guys, we, we gave a heads up in July that we were starting a, a new manufacturing process and we were going to start introducing what we call the um, twin extrusion vacuum coated pellets. So we'll introduce the view, viewers to some of that this evening. But the True Feed pellets have been around a while. So we've got the traditional uh, car pellets, we've got the maize pellets, then I've got the two different sizes uh, for the viewers this evening, the hamper on the uh, double extruded and uh, vacuum coated, and then the typical old enhancer that we're quite familiar with. So each is probably valued on shelf, shelf price at the moment, probably about 500 rand a hamper. So I think um, the, the guys... So now it's, now it's 600 rand. Well, yeah, okay. We've just added value. I'm sure we added value. So uh, I'm sure whoever's going to get it this evening, if they pay attention to the, uh, the question I know you're going to ask, um, yeah, I think they're going to catch some nice fish on it. So, om te kwalificeer vir dit, moet jy natuurlijk een vraagje antwoord en uh, baie mooi luister na ons onderhoud met um, Dean, want die vraag en die antwoord gaan natuurlijk daar wees. 
So yellow with more elastic, so that yellow can answer it. Then we are also giving away, not tonight, but over the next um, few weeks, all four anglers members, and we do it specifically for um, the annual membership for this specific prize. So everybody that renews their annual or joins as an annual uh, member in the next three weeks will be in the mix for this beautiful prize. It's a Pro Logic C Series 6000 bike feeder um, reel that uh, we are giving away with compliments from Pro Logic. We have done the entire series and uh, you can go to Four Anglers, just type in Pro Logic Reels, either on Four Anglers or on Four Anglers YouTube channel, and you can go and watch the whole discussion about all the reels from the entry level right up to the um, top of the range uh, specimen reel from Pro Logic. So that's a nice range, and if you're a Four Anglers member that has renewed annually or joined, you will be in the draw for that. There's also another one that is still running at the moment, which we will um, give away shortly as well. And that is a Sensation uh, competitor uh, rod, 12-foot competitor, plus a, an Akuma uh, 4000 reel. That is also running at the moment. And that is for all members, not necessarily an annual member. Everybody that's a member of Four Anglers, you will be in the draw for that, as long as you're a paying member. So, without any further ado, kom ons gaan kyk a bykie, uh, wat kan ons verwacht, by hier gaan ons alweer, en ek wil vir julle sê, verrechte engel, kyk hier gaan ons alweer. Verrechte engel, Kijk hier gaan ons alweer, saterdagavond, 6 uur, vanaf 1 oktober. Wow! <laughs> yes! 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 Is dit nou nie oulik nie? Nou ja, verrechte engel, hier gaan ons alweer, kijk hier gaan ons alweer, lees die overengelaar en die stuive lijne, en maak seker jy is op Voehengers Live, so dat jy jou kennis kan verbreed, Elke dinsdag aand om 7. Dien Pelsen, nou, um, Dien is a, I think, a well-known name and angler that uh, many of the guys have seen on the bank. And uh, for my kant af van junior daar, nou, to ek so daar nie, ons het daai tyd, um, daai het die onder 21 SA's wat begin het. Ek denk, Ons het so oorgeskyf na die onder 21, toe kom jy so in op die junior kant. Dus het so soort van jou eerste jare daar. So, um, we've been fishing together for quite a while. Maar nou ja, Dien, jy is a, a multiple protea angler. Um, how many protea caps? Well, 27 uh, protea caps. But, um, you know, I, I just, as you were mentioning, and I, I think to myself, I reflect back, I was 17 when I started, right? And if I think back where Andine was there then and where it is today, it's it's so different. In those days, we didn't have pen copper. Mm. And I think it's fantastic that we have pen copper today, the way we introduce the, the youngsters into the fishing. And, you know, I got dropped in at the deep end. And I'll, I'll never forget, I got my first, it was RSA colors in those days. As a, as a junior, you, you didn't formally get a mm -hmm. protea or a springbuck. You got RSA colors. And then I went straight from, from the, uh, the junior scenario into the senior scenario. And I think some of the people will still remember one of the legends, old Cassie van Ameda. In those days, it used to be Southern Transvaal and Eastern Transvaal and, and those type of things. I was Eastern Transvaal, you were in Southern. I was in Southern, <laughs> I was in Southern. And I got, to, I got to give a shout out here. Uh, it was Gordon Muir who taught me how to fish. So big shout out to Gordon. I think you guys know him very well. I think yeah. he's probably one of the most, if not the most capped um, South African angler, but he, I trust he taught me well. And I moved across into my first senior national trials or essays, and it was at Trichardsfontein Dam. And I'll never forget, I really didn't know much about the sport. I was like new in the sport. Fished the first day, enjoyed it. I won my zone. Fished the second day, I really enjoyed it. I won my zone. In those days, Quinton Funny Hefer was my pig mate. 
and the fish the third day, and I won my zone. That was SA, so you had three firsts. I had three firsts on, on my first senior nationals at SA, at Trichardsfontein Dam. It's actually Trichardsfontein Dam, on Spanish word, the longest word I've ever seen <laughs> in Afrikaans. So <laughs> but anyway, and um, that evening, I was so naive. I went to Cassie van Ameda, and it was still Porky Abner, and Mark Abner, and Quinton, and Jan van Eerf, and like really some of the big names that, that I got to the privilege of fishing with and probably being developed and trained under in those days. And uh, I went to, to him and I said to him, look, does he think I, I've got any chance of making the trials, of getting invited <laughs> to the trials? And Shane, he looked at me as if I must have been the absolute dunce in the corner of the classroom. You know, like, how can you ask that question? And yeah, that, that was my introduction into senior bank angling. I was fortunate enough, I was Victor Rodorum on, on that um, that nationals and went on to fish with people like um, Bjorn Liver back in those days, also a very, very renowned angler, and walked into the, the pro tier team. Um, so I was quite young. I was 19 years old when I got my first springbok mm -hmm. uh, in those days, um, jacket and, and cap. And if you remember, we were also in sanction period mm -hmm. in that time. So we didn't quite have the opportunities that the, the anglers have today in, in terms of getting caps and getting international exposure. But it was really a good stomping ground and a learning ground um, dating back to then. And it was the days where there was like a German team coming here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. know. So uh, Switzerland came out, Germany came out, Amsterdam, Netherlands came out. So that's the way we used to get our tests yeah. done in, in those days. And even worse, we used to give the competing nation against us a helper. <laughs> yes. from the province, you know, that was hosting it just to, to make it a little bit more difficult. But if one reflects back and you think where bank angling comes from in, in South Africa and where it is today and the energy and the effort and just everything that is evolved, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, so, so that was the kickoff and that was the start. But then you went on and you've, I think you've traveled the globe or at least a, a number of countries were you really caught monster carp and big carp and things like that, both locally as well as internationally? Um, what was like the most impressive venue that you've been to internationally? Oh, my word, Van. So first, first and foremost, you know, I I was heavily involved in in the fishing scenario. Um, if if people reflect back in those days, I was trying me baits. I was the first guy in the country to blend baits. And the reason I'm highlighting that, because we were actually part of the pioneering of, of angling in South Africa. Um, I had the privilege of, of working with a lot of, in my opinion, still today, legends, uh, Jumbo, Skulk, Gierpianel, Johan de Klerk. I mean, those are really the, the people that were pushing the boundaries uh, back, back in those days. And they still are today. Um, in about... 2000, um, I just become a general manager. I've been in the mining industry all my life, and I just become the general manager of a large mine. And for those who know the mining industry, it's a very significant role. And I actually had to say to the guys, I'm spe stepping back from angling. And I did. I stopped for a, a good couple of years. I left all competitive angling and I focused on the career and, you know, doing those type of things. And Skulk still said to me one day, he said, Oh, are you going to come back? And I said to him, yeah, no, sure, I'll come back. And uh, that was in 2004, headed down to the national championships, won the national championships, went on to the, um, the Protea trials because we had already then transferred from Springbuck to Protea and uh, was fortunate enough. And they had just started up the carp fishing facet. So you're asking about countries mm -hmm. and global. And in 2005, I got my first carp cap. And we went off to, to Belgium, fished a beautiful venue in, in Belgium, and South Africa landed up coming fourth. Um, very different uh, facet, but I was hooked. Mm. Hook, line, and sinker. That team was on the cover of the bank handler, um, that first team that went over. I tell you what, I was hook, line, and sinker into it. The, 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 the changing technique the thinking that went not only into what you were doing, but how you executed, what baits you were using, and the size of the fish that you, you obviously were catching as a result of it, was just an absolute mind shift for me. And since then, um, I've been fortunate enough now to take a further nine caps, 
uh, internationally across the countries, Fish Portugal, England, UK, um, been over to France, we've been to Serbia, uh, been to big, Belgium. Big one that you would like to return to. Oh, okay, but it it's, it's depends on what you're thinking about. Two, two. So, see, you, see you always yeah, pushing the boundaries. So ask for one and a. Of course, I have to. to. I have to. <laughs> so, um, one that will always stand out in my mind is a venue. It's called Petra Fitta. It's in Italy. 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 I've been there. It's a man-made venue. It is just stunning. It's yeah. amazingly beautiful. And why it sticks out uh, for me in my mind that was where. We actually executed zig rigs. So I know not a lot of people in South Africa are familiar with zig rig fishing, but we were fishing a water column. Now remember, we're casting. This is not boats, okay? It's casting. And we're fishing a world championship. Is that the 12 foot rigs that you used? 18. 18 foot. 18 foot rigs. And I mean, it's, it's such a mind shift when I, I speak to the, the traditional bank anglers, you know, the guys who are pop queen, and I respect that because I've done it and it's awesome and it's lovely. But there's just so many variances in, in the facet. And the, the water column we were fishing was 40 foot deep, right? 40 foot is deep. Baie deep. <laughs> okay. And I say, ek praat van deep, ek praat nie van hoe ver ek gooi nie. Ek praat van hoe diep is die water. En wat ons daar gedoen het, ons hoekleinkies, was 18 foot, de 6 meter, nee, lang. So as jy praat van een stroplijnkie van 12 centimeter, ek praat van een stroplijnkie wat 6 meter lang is. Nee. En die aas wat ons daar gebruik het is, um, ons het een jet black pop-up heel toevallig daar gebruik, maar hierdie ding in jou, jou oog met jou, jou, how do you say, jou mind's eye? Ja, in, in jou verbeelding. In jou verbeelding. Hierdie, hierdie klein aasie staan 6 meter van die grond af in een kolom water wat 40 voet diep is. Nee. En hoekom het so speciaal vir my was? Um, ons het 18 kilogram um, de common gekry. Uh, ek het, en was ook op een van jylle covers ja. op stadium, ek het 15.3 kilogram, ons noem het Luigi. Ja. Maar dit is... Um, so op een leerkaart. It's almost a leather, not quite a leather, and it's got quite a big scoff, you know, behind it. It's a beautiful, beautiful fish. And those fish will always stand out for me in, in my mind, not only on how I caught it, and how scenic and beautiful the venue is, but the size of the fish and the quality of the fish. And why I said two, so that was the one. The, the second one was uh, South Africa, we had successfully defended our world title, our world championship title four times in a row. And we were pushing the boundaries. Of course, they always said, you know, in 2008, we got it in South Africa. In 2009, we got it in France. They said that was lucky. We would never do it on European order. Uh, 2010, mm -hmm. we did it in, now I must remember, where was 2010 now? Romania. It was big, when did you go to France? No, it was at, at, at Corbu. No, France was 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, UK, sorry. Oh, yeah. It yes. was, was, was in the UK, English. and I remember those big signboards <laughs> saying, who's, who's going to, you know, <laughs> prevent South Africa from, from doing a, a hat trick? And when we walked into that function that evening, we took a piece of paper and we said, no one <laughs> is going to prevent South Africa from performing it. So anyway, I mean, we, we got that three times in a row, and then we went off and we defended it at um, uh, Corbu. Mm. Ah, sorry, not at Corbu, at Petra Fita. Mm. And that's why I say that was really, really special. Yeah. I mean, we did it four times in a row. And we headed off to Italy and uh, to um, Romania uh, the year thereafter to a place called um, Corbu. And it's also a man-made lake. And from what I learned there is what I applied in developing the Nile in the swims and all of those things. But, you know, it, it was almost mission impossible to try and do it a fifth time. But why I say Corbu was so special? I think Corbu taught South Africans um, quite an important lesson on boilie piping and significant differences. I'm talking about 72 hours putting boilies out, um, you know, 130, 140 meters. It, it's just such a mind shift. It's a, shift on your hand. it's a shallow venue. You had to fish very far. We were doing things then already that South Africans thought were impossible. And the way we built ourselves up into that championship as, as a team and the, the tactics that we deployed was... We didn't win it. We didn't get a fifth time. So, you know, I'd, I'd say I'm disappointed about it, but, you know, realistically, I should focus on well, South Africa. We did it four times in, in a row. And we more recently did it again in 2019 at the, the, the World Games. But those two venues stick out for me. Um, pristine venues, lots. 
there is places that are so picturesque that you could get lost in the surroundings and forget about the fishing. Well, we'll get lost in that <laughs> if we don't start focusing on our timing here. Yeah? So my last question on this segment is, um, you've also fished significantly big fish in South Africa. What is your PB in South Africa? Okay, so my, my PB, and I don't regard myself as a, a really top class monster carp angler. So there's, you know, the different facets of monster carp is traditionally with the guys are going out, placing the baits, finding the fish, you know, um, being very patient and accurate in what they do. I've done a couple of sessions, um, my, my best in a, a natural open environment. I'm not talking about a lake that's had fish introduced into it, like we've got a couple of those syndicated venues in the country, was 20.21 kilograms. A common, beautiful fish. I think you actually may have used it on one of your mm -hmm. clips for the show tonight. Uh, even more so, what a privilege, I caught it with my son. Um, and it was out at a venue, we call it, am I allowed to say the venue? Yes, you can. Okay, clip copy. In those days, not many people were mm. aware of, of the venue. Today, it's a very popular venue. Um, but it's, it's got some awesome fish. Okay, but it's also your overall BB. It's the biggest fish you've ever caught. Uh, it's, biggest carp. It's the biggest uh, common carp, yes, that I've, I've ever caught. Um, I've caught cats bigger than that. Mm -hmm. um, I've caught sea fish bigger than that. But in terms of uh, bank angling, and in terms of the, the carp style, herring fishing, but where you cast him, all of my PBs so are just over 14, unfortunately. Um, just over 14 on a common, just over 14 on a ghosty, just over 14 on a mirror, just over 14 on a leather. So, and mm. I mean, that in itself, from a casting perspective, is not bad. No, no. It's um, not. I've caught a lot of fish, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19 kilos, but that's the monster, monster carp. Yeah. Okay. Well, remember that. So, let's go and have a look at what happened at Safdad. Ons was by the Safdad Sko, ons het hele paar stalletjes besoek. Jy kan ook gaan kyk op ons uh, YouTube kanaal en op For Anglers na elke vervaardiger en elke holseiler sy eie um, stalletje met alles wat daar was. So gaan kyk na dit. Maar ons het hier vir jou een highlight by mekaar gesit um, om net vir jou het lompie van hulle sy most innovative products te wees. Ons Ek het na elke stalletje toe gegaan en nadat hulle vir ons die hele alles verduidelik het wat daar is het, ek gaan pik wat ek gedink het die meest innovative product is. En dit was baie interessant. So ons gaan julle dit wees in twee episodes, ons gaan nou so vier wees en bykie later nog. En as ons terugkom nadat ons vir jou hierdie gewees het, dan gaan ek een vraag hier vraag. En jy kan dan inskryf en jy kan twee van die enters wen. Wel twee gelukkige kijkers kan elke ene ene verwend. So kom ons kyk na Safdad, so most innovative products. By Supercase stand, het ek nou kom kyk na wat is die meest innoverende product. Hulle sê altyd, hulle is bezig met innovatie en al die type goed, so jy kan nou na al die dips en so aan kyk, maar vandag is my meest innoverende product nie dit nie. Hier die stand, wat op enige plek amper soos a mobile rak is, wat baie vinnig makkelijk op een plek opgeslaan kan word, waar die hengelwinkels een probleem het met rakspasie, denk ek is die meest innoverendste product um, van sy kaase kant af. So, hierdie karton, gevouw en geprint in die rechte manier, is na my mening hier die meest innoverende product. Adrenaline fishing en ek is deur hulle hele stand, daar is een paar baie innoverende interessante producte by die stokke en alles, maar hier die ene is een Kamatsu Flash Minnow, um, is vir my die meest innoverendste en die rede daarvoor, afgesien daarvan dat hy een rattle het, het hy een plaaikie wat flash tussen twee veerkies en maak die geringste tap op hom of die beweging. Um, beweeg die plaaikie so in hy flash, wat die, realist, well, die realistische nabootsing van een minnow um, wees. So, dit is van adrenaline fishing 
die meest innoverendste product wat ik hier kon krijgen, wat mij interesseert. Dat was een retainersling. Gilbert zei voor mij: no problem. 55 kilo kaap zonder een probleem. Ons gaan het toets. Ik heb zo so pas een karp gevangen. Ze is mijn karp. Ons het een klaar geskip. Gilbert, gaan jij dit maken? Kom eens kijken. Kom eens kijken. Ons gaan een karp laaien. Kijk, vertel retainersling. Dan trek ik die karp aan. <laughs> Oké. Okay. 1, 2, 3. Is een zwaar karp hier. Als dit mij piwi is. <laughs> Oké, okay, uh, foto, 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 foto. Ik <laughs> uh, moet die karp. Karp was zo. Daar <laughs> Apparently kan hij die slingen doen. Hij kan 25, 35, 45, 55, 55, niet 65, 58 kilogram doen. Very interesting range. Um, I'm quite impressed with what they have at the Formalito stand. Um, quite a number of interesting brands. Now at every stand I look at which is the most innovative product that I can find on there. Now look how cool this is. They say these pans um, as actually has fish on it. But you can't see them unless you look in the water. So let's see. I'm going to pour some water onto it. Ha ha! Kijk There's a fish appearing when it's wet. So this whole product range, or the, these pans, I've got nice fish appearing. Now to go with that, which is also quite innovative, are these glow in the dark. So in the dark, have a light, see where your mate is. Have your mate in the water, see where the fish is. Well done, Pelagic. Excellent, innovative, bit of a gimmick, but excellent work. Well done. This is my choice at the Formalita stand. Thank you and Trufi for the next segment for us. And uh, we can also now ask the question. So, we have a question for you to win the Trufi. You have to send your answer to the next number. This is our WhatsApp line 079-301-7832. So, make sure you send your WhatsApp to the answer to the next number. En uh, maak ook zeker is het je naam op je WhatsApp. So je naam in die antwoord naar hier die volgende nummer. Ons gaan hem zo so rukkie daar los, terwijl hem los ons pons so is stikkie daar. Maar die hou ons terwijl ek die vraag vraag. Laat hem doen. Oké, okay, die vraag is. Wat was die kleur van die aas wat die in sy pivie mee gevang het? Nee, ons het het nie gehad. Nee, hy kan zelf nie onthou nie. Wat was die gewig van sy PB? En dit het hy wel genoem. Wat is dien sy overal PB sy gewig? Nou ja, jy moet daar antwoordkie vir ons gooi na hierdie WhatsApp lijn toe aan die einde van die program gaan ons 20 correcte antwoorde vat en um, ons gaan 2 van daar die hempers trek. Nou ja, al ons prijse. Hierdie hempers, dit wat uitgaan, daar die hempers, van met die tijdskrifte die lot, Word afgeleverd met die complimenten van JKJ Express Couriers. Hulle is vinnig, hulle is net so, hulle lever al die prijse af, hulle, um, ons gebruik hulle ook vir ons couriers. Jy kan hulle gaan kry, JKJ Express Couriers, op die internet, 
en uh, maak gerust van hulle dienste gebruik. Kom ons gesels verder oor Karp, Dean Van Gengling. Now, you've mentioned monster carp fishing, and you've mentioned from a, um, a casting perspective what your PBs are and so on, and, and, and all of those, and I've, I've looked at the, um, at the comments, om a karp van 14 kilo's te vang is groot, jy weet, dan maak jy saak wat nie. Uh, um, ek is bevoorig, my PB karp op oeverengel is groter as my specie karp PB van 15.9 is my grootste oeverengel karp met gewone papoen. Hmm. Nog op die tijd met de nummer 10 van een merwe hoekie. Net weer. <laughs> Lekker duif eierkie. Ja, <laughs> maar ma, ma nie te min, om so groot vis te vang in, in enige uh, manier is in elk geval groot. Maar die gemiddelde oeringelaar wil baie keer net groter vis van. And it's not, you don't necessarily want a 10 or a 12 or a 14. You just want to get to a venue and catch bigger fish. Because it's firstly it's nice, secondly it gives you more points and thirdly it can win you some prizes. Wat maak die pelser? om groter vis te vang. Wat sal jy doen en wat sy raad kan jy ons kijkers geef? So Werner, that's a question I definitely can't answer in two or three minutes. But the... Uh, you've got exactly nine minutes. Okay, but the... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start off by saying, uh, first and foremost, one must think about fish and fish in their life cycle. And why I'm saying that is... Traditionally, the competitive bank angling, I'm using competitive, I'll get to social, the competitive bank angling has always been back in the day, and I think it still is today, how many fish can I catch and how quickly? And oh yes, PS, there's a little legal limit size, and in some cases there's a legal ordinance fish, and in other cases it's 150 grams or a couple of mm -hmm. centimeters. So it's, it's been about how quickly can I catch them, right? What, because everyone will give you 10 points. Correct, 10 points, and I think you guys also do 10 points a kilo yeah. nowadays again. Um, so what the competitive guys have been focusing on is how quickly can I get the bite, all right? And what people don't realize, the life cycle of a fish, what a young fish is eating and what a big fish is eating, the food sources are different. So if your mindset is, and the techniques you're using, is to tackle the little fish quickly, that's the result you're going to get. If the mindset is I'm willing to spend a, potentially a little bit longer, but by applying a different technique and a different baiting strategy, you can start to upgrade the, the fishing size until you get right to the other end of the spectrum where we're talking about the monster carp angling, where you go in and you're seeking out a very, very specific place to place the location of your bait. You're putting down a very specific rig and you're happy to wait 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours to get that one bite. So I think that's what, what people must realize is, is a little bit different um, around the, the different styles. So on the bank angling side, what I've also learned, and I, I passed a comment a little bit earlier, and I'm going to go back to it now. Um, I've also learned from the monster carp fishing and from the carp fishing, there's so much knowledge and technology you can bring back into bank angling that I think some of the people are starting to do the shift in. And what I mean by that, the contouring of your water, not understanding how far you throw in. That's not important, mm. okay? And I think, I think a lot of people have evolved in saying, well, they just want to throw that far and they're going to catch bigger fish or not true. And you could throw very far and throw into a sandbank. Mm. You could throw very far and throw into a silt trap. You could throw very far and be on grass. You could, there's a hundred reasons possibly by just throwing far why you're not necessarily going to catch a bigger fish. So once you start to understand what role does the bottom play, where are the bigger fish more likely to, to, to forage? Uh, if, if I'm speaking to hunters now, if you walk into the bushveld, right, you'll see there's certain paths in the bushveld where the animals go. They don't go everywhere. Mm. They follow certain routines. It's no different to big fish. But, but there you can see where they are walking. Okay, but the question is what do you learn from what you see? And once you start to be able to say, well, I translate that, well, they go past a certain type of tree because they want a certain leaf or a berry or a seed, and they go past a certain pasture because there's salt or there's something else that they can get out of that, the fish are no different. The fish, the big fish set up a routine as to where they're going to go to go get their vitamins, their minerals, to go and get their proteins, to go and get their fats. We're talking bigger fish. The question was about bigger fish. 
So once you start to realize, but there's some of those techniques you can apply in bank angling, you can up your average size of fish. Then there's a, another whole side to it, which is about, you know, food and what you're feeding the fish. And we'll probably talk to, mm. to that a little bit later. But doing more of the same and expecting a different result is a fool, mm. right? Changing, adapting, learning, studying, and starting to realize there's a different approach and then changing your approach and learning from the result and adapting the approach and learning from the result is how one pioneers and progresses. And I used the word earlier this, this evening, I said, you know, I do regard myself as one of the pioneers in bank angling, in carp angling, in feed production, doesn't matter, um, in dip manufacture, because it's about learning from those small changes and observing what is the result. Do I have baits that are favorites that I can go and chase little fish on? Absolutely, I do. Is there a time that you have to do that? Absolutely, there is. Do I have baits that I can start to single out, increasing the average size of my fish? Absolutely, I do. Is there different techniques that I use? Absolutely, you can do that too. Okay, so, so let's, let's make it practical. So my, I'm a weekend warrior and I want to go fishing. It doesn't matter about what venue. I want to go for the weekend with my wife and family and I want to dry and, but I want to catch a number of fish. I don't want to go sit there for the weekend for one fish. Yeah. So I want to enjoy myself, catch a lot of fish, but I, I don't want to catch these dinks. What are the pointers? How do I go about and maybe I have a boat or maybe I don't or a canoe or inflatable or whatever. So how do I approach it? Okay. Where, what, let, let's give the, the viewers about five points. Okay. So, and, you know, you use the word I'm a weekend warrior, but, um, you know, the actual weekend anglers, and I'm not really involved in the fishing industry anymore, right? Um, but for, for the companies that are, that's your, your major, major audience. Your competitive anglers makes up a small portion mm -hmm. of the total population of fishermen. So it's important, in my mind, it's important for them to go out, catch fish, have fun. Why? Because they will return again. Okay. Um, I, I'm not here to try and market or sell a, a bait or a dip or a product. Um, for people that have the freedom, they're not under a competitive rule. There's so much technology available to them. There's, there's various, there's things you can cast into the water and it can show you on a phone what's happening on the bottom. There's little boats that you can send out into the water and it can tell you what's happening on the bottom. You can have inflatables with top of the range fish finders and feature finders on it and you can go out and see what's going out in, into the bottom. So it depends what you want to invest. If, if you don't want to do that, there's more basic tools that you can use and I think the guys are starting to become more and more aware of them. Um, so for example, you can throw a marker float. Okay, and there's many YouTube uh, videos where you can go and have a look how to set up a marker float, how to use a marker float, where anybody can buy it, rig it up, cast it into the water, quickly learn how to interpret what you're feeling on the bottom, quickly learn how to pay it out and measure the depth of the water, get a range finder, range the distance and plot it and contour it. Actually, I do a YouTube one on how to contour stuff. Um, we are trying to, so these are all tools that are available to the angler. So it depends. Remember what I said, if you want to move forward and progress, you've got to look and learn, go and try. Look and learn, go and try. If you just want to arrive at the lake and say, well, okay, I don't really know where to fish, but I'm here to fish and have fun. Use your eyes. Okay, but let's just go one step back. So, so now we've got the technology in all different ways. So what am I looking for? Okay, so I, I just finished off there by saying use your eyes. I always, you know, people want to know, I'm going to a venue, what distance must I fish? The first thing you must do is use your eyes. Get to the venue, look where the fish are showing you. They're there for a reason, right? What's that reason? They've, they've either been foraging there, they, they're happy with what the food source is there, they're happy with the bank pressure, they're happy with the water pressure, they're happy with the atmospheric pressure, why they're there, they're there for a reason. Take a lead, cast it, and we're talking weekend guys, competitive guys can do this too. Cast the lead till you finally get it to that distance, hook it in, measure it off, and you know what distance the fish are at. Okay. That's just visually seeing where the Visually, fish. visually so. Sure. You can then apply a different technique to say, okay, right now I know that depth. Let me go cast the marker flow to quickly check what's happening, feel the bottom. Is it silty? Is it sandy? Is it grit? Is it grass? Is it rocky? 
And then it can also help you think about what type of rig I need to use. Is it a bottom weight trace? We're talking the weekend guys, not necessarily carp fishermen. Is it a bottom type trace? Am I trying to pop my baits up with floaties or zeros or whatever the guys are using nowadays? If you're a carp angler, a pop up or a, a piece of foam or something else. Is it something where I want to use a short hook link um, because it's gravel? Or is it silty where I want to increase my hook link? These are all the spine little refining things that you can do. But what do people think it's about? They think it's about bait. They think it's about flavor. They think it's about color. Those are issues that are important, but there's other issues, basics, that are you know far more important as to whether you're going to catch the bigger fish or not. So I, I used one analogy on, on a previous conversation we had about hook link length. So um, there's a lot of respected anglers out there and, you know, Baron, Briot, uh, Jumbo, um, Skulk, a lot of respected anglers out there and they'll say, oh no, the magic answer is eight centimeters. And other guys will say, no, 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 it's 11 centimeters or it's 12 centimeters. I'm saying to you, actually, it's none of the above. If you're targeting bigger fish, just think about this and I'm going to do it visually for the people again, just so they, they get it. When you look at the carp, it's got its two pectoral fins, right? So a little carp has got these little pectoral fins, right? Okay, but the big carp's got like these big pectoral fins. When a carp feeds, it has to raise itself up onto its head. Excuse the ball spot, right? But it's got to raise itself up onto its head, and it's got to stand and it's got to... That's a leather carp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a leather carp. And it's got to stand and hoover uh, its bait up or its, its feed. And a carp is very sensitive to, to stuff it touches. If it touches your line in the monster carp fishing, you know it's tickets. It's not going to happen, right? So as soon as you start to increase the hook length, you'll start to increase the size of the carp you're going to catch on average. Why? Because the, the bigger fish can approach the bait, get comfortable over the bait, and it can actually suck the bait up. If you're fishing a short hook link, and I mean, just visualize my mouth, right? I'm the carp now, and I'm doing this thing, and I'm standing here, and I'm trying to suck this bait up, but it's got a short hook link. Is it coming to me? No, it's not going to get to me, right? Halfway. Am I going to catch the fish? Mm. Very unlikely. Mm. I'm not saying impossible. The fish can go down and forage into the silt, but it's unlikely. If it's a longer hook link, I've got more of a chance of catching a bigger fish. Remember, we're talking about how do you catch bigger fish. And um, it's a basic thing. And I think a lot of people are uncomfortable to think about the techniques of what they actually see. And there's so much good YouTube footage, underwater footage. And that's why I said the carp side of the things, when we used to research a venue before we go and fish a world championships, there's so much information out there. If you invest the time, you will change your result. You will shift your mindset and you will see that coming through on your score sheet. Um, are guys going to catch smaller fish and beat you in competitive angling? It can happen. Mm. But if you're the social guy and you go in and you want to have a good weekend, and, you know, if you decide, I don't want to chase young fish, there's definitely techniques you can use on your rig, bait presentation, quality of bait, that will change that. I have, uh, what I do like, um, I, I've seen a lot of guys now starting to, to advertise the spawning, mm -hmm. uh, which is a cop technique, but they advertise it to use it and deploy it in social bank angling. I think it's a fantastic outcome. I don't manufacture spoms, I don't sell spoms, I'm not interested in spoms, but it's a technique that will change the average size of the fish that the guys are going to catch. Why? Just because of the particles. Because of the quality of the food you're now putting in the water. It's not a milli bomb. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different manufacturers of, of milli bombs. Um, we were involved in that at a stage, but a, a milli bomb in the most basic form, most basic form, some people are playing a little bit, but in the most basic form is, is maize. It's maize that's been popped, it's been served, it's been grounded a bit, and so it's effectively starch, sugar, and very, very little protein, no fats, no salts, no minerals, no amino acids, nothing that actually says to a big fish, I should be eating this. Mm -hmm. Where the spobbing is allowing you to introduce all sorts of peanuts, tiger nuts, chickpeas, maize, kabooms, hemp, so you're introducing a whole different variety of stuff that will bring bigger fish into your swim and the results will definitely change. Okay, we're going to chat about what carp eat a little bit later. So let's have a look at part two of the SATAD in most innovative products that we saw at the show. Almost.
At Sensation, we've gone through everything. We listened to all the beautiful products. Most innovative. My choice on the Sensation stand, the Hakai. It is an extremely light, 167 grams of bass bait caster. They have done so many innovative things here. Now, I want to show you a couple. Apart from the fact that the, the body is lightweight and it has a 22 pound drag. This specific one is a 7.3 to 1. But look here. And just open it. If you take this apart, this entire assembly with the spool weighs less than 10 grams. 10 grams. Why? Because it's got a hollow, hollow it's a patented um, design. The shaft is hollow and it's got bearings at the ends. It's a, got a magnetic um, control in terms of the, the casting control and it is situated in here. So it's externally adjustable. You don't have to open anything uh, whatsoever. You can just um, on the fly adjust it. If I just put it together the correct way, that's it. So you can just adjust it here. And that's all it has. No centrifugal, nothing. Because the spool is light enough at 10 grams with a 22 pound drag. So well done. Uh, on this stand's most innovative product, the Hakai. At the Mia stand, there was quite a new couple of new products, um, innovative ideas, new things, etc. But the most innovative and the most simple is this little. Um, it's a float. So it's a live bait float. So firstly, we start off with the live float, with the live bait float, and always you want to cast it somewhere. So it will float, but you can weight it. So you can just open it. Mm, oh, you can open it like that, and fill it up with water, and then you'll have some casting weight on it. So how does it work? It has a plastic tube in the middle right through okay so your line goes just goes in the middle and it's big it's quite a big hole so you'll be able to thread your line through very very easy you thread it through you open it up you fill it up with water or whatever you want to get to the right weight you can obviously then uh, decide how much water you put in and then the innovative part is you just put it like that and you twist it so what happens then is that it, that silicon tube twisted will have your line in the, in the middle and it will then grab onto your line and you will not be able to move it on the line. So you just untwist it, put your line through, twist it and it will grab your line on the inside and it won't move. You then fill it up with, um, with water and have a weighted float and that's it. And very easy to use you, um, live bait float where you don't battle to have a small tiny hole to get it through, plug it with matches and all those type of things. Easy as that. Put it through, twist it, fill it up with water, cast, catch li with live bait. Shimano has always been synonymous with um, some good reels and going through the whole range on the Shimano stand it was quite a, a difficult task to select the most innovative but when I picked up this reel it is the new Stella um, and I looked at the new features and the way that they've engineered this firstly uh, in terms of the the weight it's still a solid 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 reel there's absolutely nowhere any play um, but the super slow oscillation is a feature that was never part of the Stellas um, and it now is so smooth line lay is absolutely perfect. Now, the innovative part, anti-twist 
um, there's a little fin in there that is an anti-twist fin. So it closes the gap. So if you have a wind knot or a little twist on the line um, and you start reeling up, it will not go onto the um, reel. It, will be, it would have been smoothed out by that smoothing fin. So um, that is it. And then obviously again, the uh, quality of the, um, of the drag of the, of the Stella. That's it. Well engineered, very in innovative, and even on this size, on a two and a half, to have that type of um, super slow oscillation, an excellent line lay is perfect. So from the Shimano stand, this is my vote on the most innovative product. We have concluded everything on the Kingfisher stand now, and uh, I needed to choose the most innovative product on this stand. Now, there were quite a number of them, but this one is the cherry on the cake. It is Mustad's Inkvader. Now, I thought, Inkvader, what, does, what do they mean with Inkvader? So in the packet, you get some ink tablets. Now, the ink tablets goes with this. This is an octopus, um, with real life ink and very real life um, tentacles it's used for slow jigging it's got different weights so it's a nice heavy weight to go down for the slow jigging and uh, real real life now you, you'll see that there's a there's a, a little hole in there um, and you can then that's where it will squirt out so two points of um, attachment and that's it Mustad's Inkvader my choice on this stand for the most innovative product Bye danke an Sensation but the volgende ancestor for ons moeilijk maak Dean, walking into a restaurant, having a menu on the table will obviously get certain people excited about certain foods. Mm -hmm. Are carp the same? I want to say yes, um, but I think it's, it's not just, it's about the age dependency. So there's a kiddies menu as well. There's the a kiddies menu, there's a seniors menu, there's an adult menu, there's a... Um, a summer menu, there's a winter menu, you know, so if you understand the, the fish themselves, what their bodies are looking for and when they're looking for it, you, you can influence the menu, definitely. So the industry that you, into, that you got yourself into now is actually producing fish food, not mm -hmm. for anglers, but for, for fisheries. Correct. And, and, and I guess that you learned a couple of things there about what fish eat. Absolutely, and I mean, what what an eye opener! So, um, I did indicate earlier when it came to the blending of baits, I was the was categorically the pioneer in South Africa, um, first guy to blend baits, first guy to have very different names on baits. Everybody does it nowadays, which is fine. I mean, it's a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, and in that, I learned a lot. Christopher, my son, uh, following on, also a very very um, good angler. I think a very formidable angler is earning most definitely his own name with all his, his caps that he's got on an international stage now as well. Christopher took a different line and he went down food. Can we talk about this? Yes, let's, okay. let's, talk, about, let's so, talk about the principles of food. And, and there's something that you told me earlier, um, which I think I knew, but I, it never, the, the penny never dropped. And you spoke about the composition of the food yeah. across the age or the, the life cycle of the, of the of fish. fish. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm interested in. Okay, so uh, we, we got involved in, or Christopher in particular, got involved in a, a research and development facility working with tilapia food, working with a number of nutritionists on tilapia food, and the intention with that was to take over the, the research and development facility and turn that into a production facility. In that process, and working with the, the nutritionists and clearly being an angler, at heart, 
he then started to share with me and we started to recognize that, hold on, I mean, yes, tilapia is different to a carp, to a koi, to a catfish, to a bengasius, to a trout, but in principle, they all function around the same basis. What does that mean? The fish has a life cycle. Through the life cycle, there's certain things like your infant baby. There's certain things that its body needs. And <laughs> it needs to, to develop. And once they become the teenager, there's other things that they need and the testosterone and the muscles and everything else that's coming along. They become a bit more senior. It's about, oh, okay, high quality, false teeth are coming on, need to eat the right things. And then once they become a, a veteran or an elderly person, it's, it's also, you know, what is it that I can consume for the least effort, the most return on, on my body? So once you start to understand that in the fish cycle, it holds true for any fish, okay? Principally. Principally, it holds true for any fish. So people say, oh, but chili just means the fish food must be small. Yes, it does. Or the fish food must be big. Yes, it does. A small fish can't eat a big pellet. And, you know, a big fish doesn't really want to eat a small pellet, although it can. But it's about the composition. What, what's the a note in, in the sticky course? And I think that's where we are light years apart from what anyone else is, is putting on the shelf um, when it comes to, to fishing stuff. And I reiterate, our business is not producing fishing stuff. The business is for the commercial farmer, big scale commercial farmers who want to get a fish to market to grow as quickly as it can, the least mortalities, the most health, the right fat, the right color, everything that gets them the best price in the market. That's the level of technology we're playing with. Okay, we're not trying to see can you catch a carp or a muddy or, but you can take that principle and you reverse it back into the bank angling, which we've now demonstrated. Um, through some of the products we've already made available to, to the people. It's about nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. Um, the fish know what good food is. Once they hone in on it and they find it, they will literally, again, if you watch underwater footage, you'll see this. They will literally hone in on the good food, and you can have a ray on the space cart. You can have a, a whole dessert table sitting there, and they know which is good or which is better than the rest. And once, they, pick it up. once they've got that, they will literally come and pick it out amongst the, the rest of the stuff. And you can see this. Uh, Corda does a lot of DVDs, uh, underwater footage, uh, Danny Fairbrass and the boys, and they have demonstrated this globally over and over on carp, on tench, on a number of different species. No different in South Africa. Are there certain things in food that are feed enhancers that will get the fish to keep on feeding? So it, it, that's an interesting question. I think the word has enhanced, has been used very loosely by too many people who are actually uninformed. And it's, you know, I almost want to say a gimmick to sell a product. Oh, this is a feed enhancer. It will stimulate the fish into feeding. And there's very few things um, that, that do that. One of which is key, and it's exceptionally expensive, is amino acids. And I don't think the average person understands so when we look at putting a nutritional plan together for a fish, right? It's about fats, it's about fibers, it's about proteins. That's the basics. That's the absolute basics, right? From there, you've got to start looking at what is the mineral composition, what's the amino acids, what's the palatability, what's the, uh, the other nutrients, all the minerals, the colorants, the natural colorants that are in there if you want to get a trout flesh to go to a certain color that it gets better price at, at market. If you want to have marbled fat, in, in the meat because it's a better price at market as opposed to gut fat, digestibility, they call it palatability. Does the fish pick it up and reject it? There is so much that goes into developing any of these and it's got nothing to do with smell. When you talk about dips and colors and everything else, it's all about the smell of people. We're yeah. smelling it. Yeah. That's not what the fish is smelling. On a, on a molecular level, that has got a chain which creates a smell that we recognize. That chain breaks down in the water and the fish recognizes the molecules. The fish doesn't smell a pineapple or a strawberry or a cinnamon or it a bunch. It recognizes but the, valu the valuable food inside. It picks up those tiny little molecules that says to him, hmm, this is food that I can maybe eat today. Um, when, when you go on to producing this, the only real triggers that are involved in this is the, the fact that the fish picks up on the amino acids. 
because that says it stimulates the fish to say, hmm, something I can eat here. Someone else is eating. I know amino acids, and that's associated with good food. Let me go find it. And that's one of the, the biggest issues that, that we have in what we do. What we, we've been talking about bigger fish. So what is, what is in good food that bigger fish will look for? Okay. So first and foremost, I want to, you know, there's a, a South African mindset that says, oh, pellets. Any pellets, you know, if you feed in a pellet that's got protein in, be it uh, blood meal, feather meal, fish meal, poultry meal, doesn't matter. Any animal type pellet, or you're going to catch bowl. Yeah, big myth. Big, big, big myth. Are you going to catch bowl? Yes, you'll catch bowl. Are you going to catch big cock? Yes, you're going to catch big cock. Why? Cats, big cats, eat the same food that big carp eat. Why? Because the carp understands where the proteins are, where the fats are, where all the vitamins are. That same crab that the cat eats, the carp eats. That same freshwater mussel that the, the cat eats, the carp eats. And I'm talking about the big fish. We're not talking now about the little fish. Because the diet spectrum, the whole spectrum changes. The, the you know, I almost want to say the, the scale of who's who in the zoo when it gets to big fish. There's no difference between a carp and a bobble. A big carp will chase a bobble off the food. Okay, if a school of big carp come in, it'll chase the catfish away off the food. They're big enough to dominate. They're quite happy to do that. And often we've even seen it where we'll be catching catfish, 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 and the next minute the cats are gone and it's just big carp after big carp. They come in and they push them off the feed. They're competing for the same food. The fats, the fats come through in natural fats and oils that we introduce into it. The, um, the proteins that, that we, there's a number of, of, of ways that we get protein in to it. And the, the process that we use, which is the twin screw extrusion process. So you are cooking all the, they call it fatty chains. You break in the fatty chains down. So you would have uh, seven, not several, seven raw materials. And I'm talking now about, you know, from poultry meals, fish meals, feather meals, blood meals, maize, um, soya, you'll have that as your base composition, which you then bring down into a powder, literally into a fine, fine powder. You then introduce up to 15 elements that we introduce in, on from your amino acids all the way through your, um, your, your, your micro inhibitors, your uh, minerals, your vitamins, your colorants, all of those that are actually stimulating the fish's health. For us, it's all about fish health. You know me, I'm about fish care, always have been about fish care. And then when you cook that together, that's the extrusion process. There's a whole chemical reaction that takes place and you break down the fatty chains, which means when a fish eats it, he can actually digest it, which is very important to us. Mm -hmm. A pressed pellet, uncooked, can't digest it, okay? He can digest it, his body can draw, that's uh, the palatability and the gut enhancer. In other words, that it makes the gut healthy, healthy in order to absorb the food and transfer that food into growth and into energy and into wellness. So, you know, a lot of the, the, the fish that are being fed with our pellets at fisheries, you'll actually see the physical condition of the fish, the fighting strength of the fish, the color of the fish, everything. It's a healthy fish and it's coming from the food. Mm -hmm. Um, like the type of things that we see at the uh, nail. Yeah, like the type of things you, you see at the nail. You, you must remember one of our biggest clients is exporting fish to Japan. Not what? They slaughter five tons of trout a day. We are talking about big commercial farms. Mm -hmm. To them, their price, if anybody's watched Wicked Tuna, I'm sure many have, um, the, 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 the meat is graded. It's graded on color. Like, like with your normal like red meat. Tuna, yeah, and it's graded on the fat, kent, uh, fat content. Is it marbled fat, isn't it? Um, and the, the, the better that is, the, the better price they get. That is what we design and develop. That's what makes us unique in what we're doing in South Africa commercially for fish farming um, is the ability. We actually are now the only vacuum oil coater in South Africa that can do um, the, the secondary stuff. Now, what's vacuum oil coating? You can get drum oil coating, which just coats the outside of the pellet. Vacuum oil coating is you actually subject the pellet to a negative atmosphere, so it and in. then you atos atomize the, the oils into it, and it sucks it into the pellet. If you bite any one of these vacuum coated pellets open, you'll see inside the oils totally. It's all like it looks on the outside is like it looks on the inside. So, um, and that's that's a big issue. I do want to talk about one of them quickly. 
Okay, I, I said that... In, in the process, um, there, there's been a couple of questions, one of them being um, the ratio, if I use some of the stuff to my normal ground weight as a carrier or whatever, what yeah. is the ratio? So okay. if you can just handle that within the question. I'll, I'll do that. So um, the, the, the people are more familiar with the, the, the traditional carp pellets that we put out quite a long time ago. It's a um, animal protein-based pellet. A lot of people were worried about catching barbel on it, and therefore they asked us to make a maize pellet. So I want to be very clear tonight. Our maize pellet is not maize. Okay, and when I say that... Maize or not maize only? Not maize only. It's got 16% maize in it. Now, you, you probably, we're not competing with anyone else on the local fish market who is producing a, a maize, literally maize that they cook and extrude, and it's just maize, and, you know, it's, we're not competing with that at all. This is for the people that were concerned that the protein base was animal-based or fish-based, that they worried about barbel. The protein base here is plant-based. It's for the vegetarian fish. Yeah, well, if you, want to, <laughs> if you want to call it for the vegetarian fish, it's for the vegetarian fish. But it's got exactly the same 15 micro ingredients in here that these have and that our twin screw extrusion. So in other words, all the minerals, the salts, the amino acids, the vitamins, everything. But it doesn't have the fishy smell. But it doesn't have the fishy smell. So I just want to make that very, very clear to, to the audience when they're thinking about the two. This is still a very high protein feed. It's not just maize. Okay. What is nice about this, and I see a lot of people are doing it, you can flavor this. So for, It takes flavor quite well. It takes flavor well. Mm. Uh, decide whatever flavor you, you like. Um, I know the guys are having really good results at the Vol Dam. Um, I know at some of the other venues like the Nile, they're flavoring this with Cine One. I know at the Vol Dam, they're using things like Lue tea and that type of stuff too. You, you literally pour the liquid over it. You mix it through until the pellet's totally coated and you seal it. And you can literally leave it sealed for a day or two or three before you go fishing and you introduce it into your ground bait. So I just want you, the question was, so what ratio do you use on ground bait? So if you recall, the first thing we did was we made this little, this guy, we call it a feed enhancer. So what is a feed enhancer? A feed enhancer is that pellet that we've taken and pulverized because people had a problem with pellets. As I say, it's a mindset thing. They're going to get past it, but they had a but, but it's also not so easy to, to put, buy. Uh, yeah, to Correct. Put a so, ground bed with pellets. So we, we took that and we just pulverized it. That's all we did. Okay? It's a little bit more expensive. Why? Because you've got to introduce more energy to get it from that to this. And then this little guy then became any bank angler. Doesn't matter whether he uses Supercast, whether he uses Coniflex, whether he uses Twin Series, whether he uses uh, what's the green pack, um, uh, Bowlane. Doesn't matter what they're using. So I'm not here advocating which ball you must use. What I advocate is by adding this into your ball, you are going to change the quality of the food that the fish is going to pick up on. All his receptors are going to say he has good food, and he's going to come looking for it. He's going to be disappointed when he gets there because he's going to find nothing to eat. Had you had the pellets there... You'll have the smell. You'll have the smell. Had you had the pellets there, you would have found the actual food source and actually been able to ingest it. So um, to, to go back to that, we specifically designed this size. Your average angler goes with a two-kilo bag when they go fishing for the day. Normally makes two little five-liter buckets. Add it into your water, half of this into the water, mix it up into the water, add your feed as you would normally make it. So a small packet on a two kilo. Small packet on a two kilo and you're fishing for the day. We didn't want to give a guy a big packet and know he's only going to use that in a day. So we only want to sell him what he actually needs to use in, in a day. So that, that covers the enhancer, that covers what people call maize pellets, which is actually the vegetarian version <laughs> of uh, the high protein pellet, um, and then the, the normal one. I do want to spend a moment just talking about the vacuum oil coated. And it's, it's a pity that the, the viewers can't see this. So the, the feeder fishermen um, have latched onto it. The carp fishermen have latched onto it because you can use PVA and we can use feeder messes and cages and all those type of things that you can introduce pellets into the water. The, uh, the, the vacuum coated, so what I have here, this is now a three millimeter. So the range, and we actually make it again commercially for the commercial farmers, right? Um, but we go from a two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter, six millimeter, eight millimeter, and then our last one in the range is a ten millimeter. Okay, which is quite a big, quite a, a big, quite a big pellet. Um, the pellets are designed by what we introduce in them. The goodness I've already explained to you, 
but we also use a little tool, secret tool, which keeps the pellet a pellet. So we, we don't want the pellet within minutes to dissolve because that's pointless. If the guys are using it in bank angling, we want it to lay there a bit longer, attract the feed in, that the feed must come and forage on it and eat it and stay in the area looking for more. Um, going back to your question about smaller fish, small pellets are for small fish, right? The protein content, very high. The fat content, low. Vitamins, minerals, and all the rest of the things, amino acid, same. Okay, why? Because that's what the small fish needs to grow. to grow. As you come up in the pellet size, the formulation, so the seven basic elements remain the same, just the ratios at which they apply it changes, then the, the, the vitamins and the oils that you put in in change. So big fish, you can reduce the protein. It sounds like you and I are going on diet, you know. As we get older, our muscles don't need as much protein. We're not growing big muscles anymore. You reduce the protein, but the body from an energy perspective needs the fat. Mm -hmm. So the oil content, so both the fat content that we cook into it, and then what we do through the vacuum uh, oil coater, we enhance the overall oil content. Oil content very high. So what I mean very high. That would be 19% oil. This can go up to 26% oil. So now you're thinking, oh, oil and pollution. And No. If you put this pellet in the water, you will not see oil that comes floating off it. If it was rolled in oil, yes. Because it's vacuum coated, it's held inside. inside the pellet. So once the fish eats the pellet, he can digest it and he can absorb it and he can take on, on the energy. So these, as I say, these are the twin screws. Uh, the pellets vacuum oil coated. We're super excited. We uh, have helped some of our uh, national teams, which uh, we won't give too many secrets away, but um, I believe they're going to see the, the benefits of it. And I'm looking for a gold uh, medal, at least, from the, the world. Oh, oh PSU, yeah. he's, he's, he's going there. Yeah, that's right, I remember that. Um, but I, I really do think that you guys are going to catch the bigger fish and you're going to reap the benefits of just knowing what bigger fish want. I hope that helps. Perfect, it helps. Um, let's just see if there's a, another question or two that we've missed. Um, just while you're looking there, Van, I just want to say to the, the, the you know, not the weekend warrior, as you called it, I think that the, 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 the pillar cornerstone of the industry who's doing the, the weekend angling, these pellets, because you can spawn, you can spawn them into the water, right? So you can get a good food base uh, mm. on, onto the bottom, not too difficult to do. If you want to use a canoe, you can do that too. Um, but if you can't, you can take your normal feed millibomb that you make. Once it's soaked and ready and good to go, you take pellets and you'll be very surprised. You can almost cover the entire surface of your little emmerki with pellets, mix it in, and the, when you bind the ball, the ball will still bind, it will still be perfect. You won't even know you're throwing pellets, but when the ball dissolves, the pellets will be lying there. So long after the ball's washed away or hoovered away, the pellets will still be lying there holding bigger the fish. Yeah. Okay, we've got a couple of questions. Going to Rurik Copies this weekend, what should what use what baits should I use? Okay, so Rurik Copies, um, this coming weekend, the fish are in spawn or okay. close to. Yeah. So what what will they be looking so, for? So um, I'm not sure if it's a bank angler or a, a um, you know competitive angler or a, a boat fisherman. But one thing that I would suggest to you at Rudder Copies at, at the moment, there's a lot of new water that did come into the venue, as we know. It is a spawning season, so spawn immediately would trigger salt, mm -hmm. okay? Salt, what am I talking about salt? Well, that's what spawning fish are looking for. It's part of what they need. All the pellets have got salt in. It's one of the minerals that is in them. Your standard uh, uh, millibomb doesn't have salt in. So if you want to use your standard millibomb, if that's the type of angler, it's fine. Introduce a pellet or introduce salt. salt. Into that, into it, or into the yeah. um, uh, the spawn mix, or spawn mix, whatever yeah. you're going to do. And when I talk about salt, I'm talking about coarse salt. I'm not talking about fat. I'm not saying don't dissolve it in the water. Don't anything. Put it in at the absolute last moment before you're going to put your bait out into the water. That would be my starting point. And notice, I didn't say color, flavor. It's not important. The fish Content. is looking for salt. That's what their body needs whilst they're in that process. Molasses has got a lot of salt in it as well, just for those who, who know. Uh, fluorescein is a, a high salt base. Um, certain egg yellows, um, and I think you, the, the one you're probably looking for is what they call Sunset X, is a high salt content. Tartrazine isn't a high salt content. 
So once you start to understand the chemistry of the, the tools you're playing with, uh, you might say, oh, yeah, but I, I caught it on uh, Cine One, and I'm going to use that again. It's probably not the Cine One. It's probably the Sunset Hex that is in the Cine One that's up the salt content in that that is attracted to the bait. I can't speak for other bait manufacturers. I don't know what salt they do or don't put in. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I would be. I would, I'd be honing in on that. Okay, effect. so there you have it. Uh, next question. Do the pellets, the maize pellets, sink? And the other pellets? Yeah, so... Uh, what we've done for the, the, the carp fishermen, all the pellet sick, right? And just for those who don't know, making a sinking pellet is far more technically difficult than making a floating pellet. When you take something through the extrusion process, you up the temperature, it pops, uh, which makes it float. Okay, and, you know, we do in our, our trout range, we do have floating pellets. In our koi range, we have floating pellets. In our tilapia range, we have floating pellets. But for purposes of what is on the table here this evening, everything is sinking because that's okay. the nature of our game here. Yeah. Where can I get these products for sale in the Springs Brockman area? Uh, good question. So right now um, we are doing two things. The maize pellets are being distributed. Am I allowed to talk by who? Yes. You can. Okay. So the maize pellets are being distributed by Twin Series. Okay. So if you get hold of them or any store that stocks twin series, you should be able to get the maize pellets. The other pellets, um, which are, are these traditional pellets and the enhancer, were being uh, distributed by Coniflex. Okay, again, if they stock, if the store has them on the shelf, um, or has Coniflex on the shelf, you should be able to get it there. If the store doesn't, um, in terms of, of those type of pellets, we have opened ourselves up through the True Feed link Contact Christopher, there's minimum orders into stores and we will supply the stores. I remind you, that's not our target audience, but we do help the stores out with that. We haven't bedded down with anyone yet. We will be distributing the, the newer version of, of the, the, the fusion or vacuum or coated pellets. So at this point in time, I mean, reach out to us, shout out to us until we've actually settled that with a, a firm distributor, which we would like to do. As I said, I reiterate, that's not our business. We move truckloads to farmers is what we do. Packaging in smaller packets, we do it because of our passion for the sport and wanting to help anglers just get better fish. Question, as a newbie to bank, angler, bank angling, what is the ideal size of pellets to mix with a millibomb when I'm casting? Six millimeter. So I, unfortunately, I didn't bring it for you this evening, um, but we do do a two, three, four, six, eight, and 10. Ideal size, six millimeter. Um, six millimeter is what we do the maize one in and why I'm saying ideal what we have found we've been able to trigger mudfish in particular at lots of venues yes we're adding a flavor to it so if you know your venue you know your flavor we've held big mudfish in swims on, on these ones uh, we've also managed to sort out smaller yellowfish so some of the venues were plagued by young yellowfish again we helped the anglers added uh, flavor to it and it sorted it, the, the, the smaller yellows out of the swim and held the bigger yellows in on, on the swim. But if you're asking me, I would say six millimeter. Okay, last question that we can take. Will a hybrid specimen rig, that's a millibomb with a air rig attached, increase my average size? So the first way I'm going to answer that question is, if you're using a hybrid rig, please, please, please make sure it's a carp safe rig. What does carp safe mean? Okay, so when you're doing the hair rig fishing, the whole issue is around carp safe, meaning that if your line breaks, your lead must come free of the hook link. So that the carp doesn't, or the fish doesn't swim around with a trace in his mouth. Correct. And the, the reason for that, remember I said I'm all about carp care and carp health. So if he's got the hook in his mouth and he's dragging this piece of lead around with him, it tears the mouth, it scars the mouth, he can get it hooked on something, he can struggle and rip his whole mouth open. Especially if there are two hooks. Even worse if there's two hooks, even worse. I mean, I just fish one hook. I'm still surprised people fish two hooks nowadays. We catch more fish fishing one hook than the guys fishing two hooks. But anyway, um, that's a whole different discussion. Um, so carp safe means if you're going to use a hybrid rig, please make sure it's a carp safe rig. The answer is yes, you will up your size of your fish. All right. But do it responsibly. Do it safely because someone else wants to and do it catch and release. Someone else also wants a shot at, at that big fish. So if you're the traditional weekend type angler, make sure I'm talking about a free sliding lead, okay, that if your line snaps, 
the lead can come off the line. doesn't matter whether it snaps between the hook link and the lead or if it snaps backwards of the hook link and the lead, the lead, the lead can, will be able to pull can, can pull through. Okay. Please, yeah. Now, this is really the last question that I'm going to allow. Um, how do I store these products? Can I just put them on the shelf? Do they need to be in the freezer or fridge? No. no. Okay, six months shelf life. No problem. Open the bag, six months shelf life. In the bag, six months shelf life. No special care required. Remember, we 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 selling this commercially to uh, farmers, and mm. you know it will be in their stores. It goes into their store. They cycle it through their store. They literally, I mean, fifty tons a week goes out on trucks, goes into the farmer's store. He's cycling stuff that he got. Um, you know, there was a three millimeter as the fish was going through that curve, then into a four millimeter, then into a six millimeter. So no, it's it's uh, we guarantee six months on the shelf. The shelf life is twelve. But um, because we fall under uh, what they call V codes, we manufacturing food, mm -hmm. so it's a very um, uh, a governmental code of compliance you've got to deal with, and it says you've got to guarantee at six. We know it's twelve, but we guarantee six. Okay, there you have it. Well, before we go and draw the winners of these lovely prizes, um, let's go and have a look what you can go and buy yourself at Geispitzer Motor. Beautiful, beautiful bucky that uh, the guys have got on the floor. Morella, Johanny by Gijsbitzer Motors and Silver Lakes. My pick of the week, Sotimeter 2021. The Auto Hilux 2.4, double K8, and it's automatic. Clarity Spotlight's lekker op for us. Let's go to the clear. It is ideal for the Owens, but. Uh, the Weg van handjes en langvingers af. Vier die zes zesers achter. En die man verkoopt ons voor 660.000. En hij is duidelijk beschikbaar. Als je zo aan die binnenkant kijkt, het hij red seat covers op. Natuurlijk het hij die Android Auto wat je kan connecten of je iPhone connect. Recht voor die pad. Dan zijn jullie ons bezoek ons gerust hier zo. Bij hoek van Zolven met Slango en Wendeman. In Silver Lakes, Pretoria, ons wacht ook van jullie te hoor. Dankie. Baie dankie, Gijspitser Motors, die hoofdboord van die program, en uh, natuurlijk ons wielevernote, hulle het prachtige voertuig op die vloere en allerlei atlets, gaan gerust en gaan kry vir jou een lekker engelbakkie. Baie dankie aan Supercast, wat vir ons 5 hampers gegeet van hulle nieuwe dips, wat ons in die ganons al weer um, vrystel. Julle gaan sien hoe ons vis daarmee vang en uh, goeie resultate bereik. Kijk gerust van zaterdag aan dag, want daar is een nieuwe tijdsgeleef. Op kanaal 144, kijk net, 6 uur, voor zaterdag aan, wat jij dit kan kijken. Nou, in hier die pakkie, het ons natuurlijk een nieuwe Kajima dip, Mango, Mangozi, ook Kajima Ball dip, en Nuclear, wat uh, uh, een is met baie floro. Natuurlijk, baie zout in ieder geval, en dan een lekker mini pit um, bordelkie daar wat ook mangozi is, wat een lekker mango geer is. So vijf van hierdie, jylle het klaar ingeskryf, ons gaan daar die wiel vijf keer spin, en dan gaan verdien vir hom elke keer vir ons die winner aan te kondig. Kom ons laat baie vijf keer in een rij. Jy gaan nou mooi groot sien. Ja, ek wou nou net sê, want my brille kan nie so ver sien. Jy, jy gaan nou mooi groot sien. Okay, so this is the first one. That's the first one.
All right, well, uh, big shout out and congratulations to Shane Brill. That is my partner for this weekend's fishing. He's in my team. I bring for you some club trip to. Oh, it's natuurlijk hierdie naweek die uh, Supercast Spanner Classic by Club Truff. So as jy nog nie ingeskryf het nie, daar is 22.000 rand om te win vir die spanne. En uh, jy moet daar wees by Club Truff, ons sien al by Lightview, as ook die oorkant as daar genoeg spanne is. Uh, maak seker jy skryf in, as jy nie deel is van ProMania nie, is baie eenvoudig, gaan download die app, teken aan Belfast' Seal, kryf jou nommer, skryf in en wees deel van dit. Volgende nommer. Of naam eerder. Ek kan het nie glo nie. Steve Hofmeier. Ek trek jou, <laughs> ek trek jou been oor. <laughs> Jason van Seil, veel geluk met jou supercast hempe. Mag jy dit geniet? Dat is nog drie kies oor. Jy sal sien, daar word verweider, so jy kan net een keer wen. Okay, another shout out to Peter Kutsia. Is that correct? Ja, Peter Kutsia, baie geluk. Jylle moet ook um, asjeblief seker maak, ons het natuurlijk um, op WhatsApp het ons jylle nommer, jy sal vir ons nou uh, jou naam of al van jou adres moet stuur, so dat jy kan jy express courier vir jou jou pakkie kan aflever. Die vierde ene. Jo, dit was nabij. <laughs> Hoe spreek jy daai van uit? Ek het geen idee nie, bout het. <laughs> ja, bout het, it looks like it. Uh, a Peter bout it. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. Peter, if I haven't, I apologize, but it looks like Peter bout it. Ok, Peter, daar is vir jou a pakkie. Die laaste ene. Oh, is a girl. Daar sê Jenny Boete, veel geluk. Ek hoop jy geniet het. Nou ja, daar is die 5 pakkies. Baie, baie dankie aan Supercast, dat dit vir ons gegeet, en dankie aan JKJ Express, wat vir ons dit aflever. Onthou, as jy in die lijn wil staan vir die ProLogic C-Series 6000 BF Bytefeeder Katrol, met die spaarspoel, maak seker, jy sluit aan as een jaarlikse vol Engels lid, Jy kan meer as 4500 artikels gaan lees op die site. Daar is soveel voordele, soveel dinge wat jy kan sien, soveel video's, en net om deel te wees van die gemeenskap, en seker te maak dat ons hier kan sit en met jou gesels, en vir julle sikke awesome um, gast te bring, om uh, met hulle hengelkennis met julle te deel. Ondersteun ons daar, wees hulle lid, en natuurlijk daar is ook een sensation stok en katrol, wat uh, die, al die lede, of het nou maandeliks of jaarliks is, ook kan wen. Daar is twee hempers van daarie, in daarie hemper kry jy een 3 mol en een 8 mol vacuum coated, een mais pallet en een gewone kar pallet. En een pakkie en hanser en een overengelaar. En een overengelaar. Daar nou, op hierdie, hierdie pakkies kom maar ook by elke overengelaar. Ok, is ons gereed met die correcte, kom ons sien het gauw, die vraag was, wat is die NCPD? En ek het sien, die man het uh, van hulle het geluister, die antwoord is 20.21 kilogram common, wat ek gevang het uh, saam met my sien by Clip Koppie dan. Kom ons geel die nog, is deel nog iets hier, wat sy aas het hier gebruik? How much time I got? <laughs> no, so one, one short question. Ok, so no, it, it was quite interesting, I used uh, giant tigers, and when I say giant tigers, I mean they were seriously giant tigers that I imported, I just cooked them up before the time, I allowed them to frenzy, drilled a hole in both, just joined them with a nice coconut, they were literally, the bait was about the size of my two thumbs like that, uh, connected, no dip, nothing, went out, dropped some high protein food, not this in those days, but high protein food that I mixed some real honey with. Uh, I'm a firm and believer. A lot of blue gums in there. It was, yeah, correct. And I'm just a firm believer of, of, of honey. I think it's a natural um, bait and preservative. Mouse trapped, waited a couple of hours, and it was that little dream come true. It was, was the bottom bait? 
Yeah, bottom bait. Well, when I say bottom bait, it had cork in, so yeah. you could argue was it critically balanced. Mm, bit of a but, waft. It. Yeah, but um, you know the, the the fish out there are wary. They're clever, and it's all about camouflage. It's about the rig, the right rig, the right layout of the rig, the right presentation of the rig, and patience. What was the bottom like? So marginally silty. It wasn't heavily silted, but it was marginally silted. It was seven and a half meters deep. So we had put out a couple of rigs at different depths. And yeah, no, no real rocket science involved there. I think we just found the right spot and put the right bait down. Big fish is a big fish. Absolutely. Okay, we have two ampers that we are going to give. Come on, spin for the first one. <laughs> okay. This is an interesting one. Uh, Martin could see a Smith. May you catch many, many awesome fish and up your PB using some of the True Feed products while reading the latest uh, Bank Angler. That's it. Nog een. Laatste ene. Bye, dankie aan True Feed. Dat voor ons een paar ampers geef. Okay, I, I used to know someone with a surname like that. Uh, Kornai uh, Wasserman, feels geluk. Ek hoop jy gaan dit geniet en ek hoop jy gaan vir my eendag terugvoer gee om te sê hoe dit jou engel verander. Kornai Wasserman is ook een van ons um, heel eerste voor Anglers lede. Ek denk hy sal voor Anglers lid van die begin af en hy het al ons open da en ons uh, members days en alles bijgewoon. Hy is ook een oeverengelaar wat oorgegaan het na die specie toe en ook sy specie engel nog ons geniet. Well, he's definitely on to the right path. Daar sê Kornei, ons stuur vir jou jou pakkie met die complimente van JKJ Express. Al wat oorblij is om te sê dankie. Eerstens dankie vir julle wat gekyk het, dankie dat julle saam met ons gekyk het. Baie dankie aan al die Paul Anders lede wat ons op die lucht hou en seker maak dat ons hier kan kyk en vis van praat saam met julle. Dankie aan Gijs Pitser Moeters so Ryan Audio Visual wat die uh, borge is vir die program. Amal wat die segmente moendlik gemaakt het, uh, True Feed, Sensation en Supercast vir die Ampers, baie baie dankie daarvoor. En natuurlijk, hier gaan ons alweer ons televisie vernote, saam met wie ons te lekker keir. Jylle sal alles kan lees in die oeveringelaar wat maandag op die um, rak is, van ons eerste oeveringel sessie, saam met hier gaan ons alweer Goeie 7 super wenke van rivier en al in die val rivier. Uh, saam met hier gaan ons alweer in skalk en uh, ons deel met julle daar alles wat ons geleer het by die tribie. Een laaste baie dankie en dit is vir Dien, Dien baie dankie dat jy saam met ons gekeir het. Daar is nie baie ouwens wat de Four Anglers live fles het nie. So, dit is nie vir politie koffie nie, dit is vir rechte koffie. <laughs> Baie dankie dat jy saam met ons gekeir het en uh, dankie vir jou tyd. Uh, thanks, Van, and thanks to, to all the viewers. You know, it's an awesome show. And from our side, really, we appreciate what you do. And we appreciate all the coverage you give us, the articles you give us, and the, uh, the technical insight that you give us. And uh, lastly, good luck for the World Championships coming up. Thank you very much. We are working hard at it. And uh, dankie vir Groofeed vir... Uh, technische ondersteuning. <laughs> Always. Enjoy. Bye, dankie. Ons sien julle volgende week, dinsdag aan 7 uur op 4 Anglers Live.